friends, today I'm doing a color study and in process swatching Daniel Smith Primatech colors. I just plan on doing some lilies with these colors that I've never used. So I don't know what I would end up with, but that's what painting without fear is all about. So join me in this journey if you feel like painting today. List of supplies is in the description. If not, then just sit back, relax, and just learn about these colors. So this is the dot card I purchased from Daniel Smith and it has 66 colors. And I'm gonna test the Primatech series. Uh, I'm uh, really curious about it because and I was reading about uh, this series, uh, these colors, and they all seem to be mineral colors, like they are mined from minerals. So I'm expecting earth tones and I have a bias towards earth tones. I'm really excited about this. And I want to uh, not do swatches because these swatches don't really tell me much about the color. So I will try and paint um, these colors into some kind of a composition. So I will talk a little bit, uh, but mostly when I paint, I kind of get lost in it. So I might go quiet. So let's see what we get. So I'm gonna try the first one. It's called the Amethyst. Amethyst Genuine. So let's see. And I'm using Arch hot press paper here. Yeah, just like I thought, it's a kind of a gemstone color. So cool. I also want to see how it disperses in water. So we'll try and see that. Right next to it is Sodalite Genuine. Seems like it's a black with some blue tinge. Nice blue. Um, shade to it. Love that. Oh wow, this is really dark and nice. See how it does. We'll see how it layers. So this kind of is a nice test. I really like this. So I'm just kind of like trying to mix this with my previous flower here. Interesting. This is black tourmaline. Let's see. It's not dark, 
kind of grayish. Um, I think it can be really useful when we do kind of a monochrome um, painting. Another interesting thing is um, it doesn't have like big granules. Like the granulating is fine. Oh wow, I like kind of how it disperses. The next one here is Bloodstone Genuine. I'm expecting kind of a red tinge here, but we'll see what we get. I don't see any red, so let's see. Oh yeah, there is a red. Cool. Can't get over the sword light. I'm going to use a little bit of that in this flower. See how it overlaps. Right next to it is Blue Appetite. So naturally we'll see some blue hint here. It's kind of a greenish blue. See how it contrasts with the soda light. Trying to remember names here. So the next one is bronzite. And I'm noticing some of the colors are kind of hard to get going. You know, they don't easily get onto my brush, which is also nice. I mean, it can be negative for some people, but I kind of like that. It tells me like it has some granules and it'll give me a good granulation on the paper. Really light and subtle.
This is an interesting name, Burnt Tiger Eye. Burns, sorry, Burnt Tiger's Eye. Seems like a brown. So let's see, it's kind of a darker brown when I'm mixing it. It also has a hint of violet, seems like. So let's see what we get on the paper. Really smooth. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it would be granulating, but. So you kind of see the difference between the burnt tiger's eye and the bronzite. Bronzite is kind of pale and this one has a red tone to it. The next one is the diopside. Oh wow, this is really gemstone. Um, I'm looking at what I'm doing. I feel like doing leaves with it. So let's see if I can. seems really smooth. I do not know how this will disperse in clean water. So I'm going to try and do that. Let's take a load of this. Interesting. It almost behaves like Holbein because one thing about the Holbein uh, brand is they don't disperse very quickly and that's what I like about Holbein and Daniel Smith um, can have different um, based on the pigment it can have a different behavior that's what I know so I like colors that don't disperse very quickly so I like this one and that's the diopside genuine the next one seems like a green as well as the fuchsia. Um, it's kind of a stone I know. It's a bluish green. Wow. Quite interesting. Really pale and almost pastel. see if you kind of want to make it dark what does it look like nice almost feel like putting together a palette of these two browns and the fuchsite and kind of forgot what this gray was I think this is the back the black tourmaline yep cool. next one is the garnet this is an interesting brown it's deeper reddish Let's see how it disperses.
So the next one is the green appetite. There was a blue appetite and there is a, this is the green appetite. Oh wow, I love this. This is almost my favorite green shade. It's, um, it's the muddy green, mossy, algae color. Again, I feel like doing leaves with this, so let's try. So cool. Let's see how it disperses. And you know what I'm noticing? This fuchsite has almost a, a sparkle to it. How cool is that? Very interesting. Oh, cool. I like how it disperses. Just going to try one more wow nice wow really love that so the next one is the hematite almost a uh, gray black again I I like how it reveals this one reveals the brush strokes uh, it almost like um, you know if you look at this oh I'm sorry now you can see this it, I like how it reveals the brush strokes it almost captured, it almost recorded it, you know? So really love that. So it's the hematite. See how it disperses? Really fast. See how it progresses on the paper? Try and do one more leaf. And when I when I use a milky consistency, it kind of just captures my brush stroke. Interesting. So next one is also a hematite violet. So I'm expecting a similar behavior uh, on the paper, but let's see. Just wanna ensure you guys can see it. Yep. Almost captures your brush hair. I mean, as if your hair is kind of making an imprint. Uh, I mean, the brush hair is making an imprint. And I like how it mixes.
does not have too many particles to it. It's very hard to get this on the brush. Uh, on the brush, I mean, uh, the hematite was not so much. I mean, I could get it easily, but the hematite violet is really hard to get it on the brush. Can't really get a very deep, a dark spot. Now I can. So just a little bit of hard work. But yeah, you know, that's the character of the color. I'm gonna go back to diopside and do a few leaves. Look how deep it is. So the next one in the line is the jadeite and wow this is a blue green and it's um, I can feel it's really soft and deep so I'm excited to put this on the paper. This really disperses well. So that was jadeite for you. Very similar behavior compared to diopside. So this is kyanite. Kyanite, and this one is again very hard to get on the brush, and it has a blue tinge to it. So let's see what we get here. Yep. Decent dispersion. Again, very hard to get a deep, um, a, a very deep kind of um, deposition on the paper. But once you do get, it's kind of pretty. 
So I had a tough time getting this deep deposition, but once you once I got it, it kind of looks nice. See how it disperses and kind of gives you a very natural kind of progression on with water. I'm going back to fuchsia and I'm going to do a couple of leaves here. I really like the sparkle in this and it's really subtle sparkle. It's like almost not there like you know, I, I'm seeing this light shine on them. So I can see it. I'm not sure if the camera is capturing it. I want to see the dispersion on the fuchsia again. Yeah, it is decent. Nice. So we have a lapis lazuli. This is going to be a blue. Yeah, a subtle blue. Very subtle, very smooth. No granules. I mean, very fine granules. See how the fuchsia layers, it's almost a deposition. You kind of get these burn marks. Again, very hard to get a deep deposition. It's, uh, it won't deposit. We have a Mayan blue, so let's see. Again, kind of a jewel tone. Yeah. But fine granules. like doing some leafy impressions with the fuchsia here. Let's see how it kind of looks together. I'm trying to get a dark center, but like many others, I'm having a tough time doing that. So this one is uh, Minnesota 
five stone. So almost earth color, like an earthen jar. like the way it dis disperses, easier to get on the brush. doing a few leaf impressions with the green appetite. So the next one is the Piemon, Piemontite, so kind of a brown shade, uh, but, a, but with a red, red tinge. So yeah, quite different. Going back to my favorite green appetite to complete the flower leaves. It's easily becoming my favorite, the green appetite. Let me test the dispersion on uh, the uh, Piemontite genuine. Yeah, it's a slower dispersion and that's what I expected. So the next one I have is the red fuchsite and I'm expecting this would have a sparkle. So let's see if it does. Yeah, you can almost see it. But it reveals better once it dries out. We'll see if I, we can get a dark deposition on this or not. Yeah, it is harder to get, but I think it'd be worth it if you got it because then it uh, will have that shine. So 
I'm going to go back to the fuchsite and do some leafy impressions. The next one is the serpentine. It looks green and it is green. Oh, this is a really cool green. This is that uh, almost like a newborn leaf. You know, like um, the spring leaves. So this was also one of my, yeah, one of my favorite shades. This one is really, really excellent and unique. Be kind of nice if I added a little bit of dioxide to it. So serpentine genuine. Is also nice. It's cool. So this one is uh, cyclorite. And it is that black brown hard to get on your brush. So let's see. So among these all browns with very subtle differences, the behavior is kind of similar. I guess what this series offers is you could go after the right shade if you were like kind of stuck uh, looking for the you know, the right color of the building or, um, you know, kind of doing a landscape. And uh, some of these natural shades are very hard to get. So this really offers a very, um, you know, almost every range of brown, a natural looking brown. And this has a yellow in it. It does not have a red. It has a yellow tone to it. It's deep, it's blackish, and it has a sort of a yellow base. So I don't quite know how to say this. It's sugilite or sugalite. And this is a gray, violet, black, brown, the pastel -y color. So let's see what it does on the paper. 
Yeah, it's almost violet. Very unique. And the last one is the zoocyte and it's also a, a, it's a greenish black or a blackish green no actually it's greenish black it's a black with the green undertone yeah again unique
I'm using these pearlescent colors. A tiny bit of them for um, the center of the flowers. And um, yeah, because what I noticed is the Primatech colors have um, a sort of shine to it. You know, I will try and take a shot of this uh, with the when light falls on it so that you can see some very subtle sparkles, you know, very subtle shine. And that's what's so cool about this series. So, yeah. And these pearlescent colors are really, really soft. So I'll put a link in the description. I'm really impressed by this. I'm using these for the first time. So here are some notes about the Daniel Smith Primatech colors. Most of them are granulating and have a very interesting texture to it. The hematite genuine and the hematite violet genuine stand out for me. Some colors have a silica-like sparkle to them, like the fuchsite, which is very, very special. And some colors are just unique, like the serpentine and the sujilite. The deposits of these colors are really really pretty on paper. I can't get over the look of these on a smooth textured paper like the hot press arch paper. However, they would look very cool on a rough paper too in a certain kind of a composition. I plan on including these in my palette for the experience they can create for my work. But what I'm missing is a, is a deep yellow in this series. Um, wow, that would have been a very cool addition. A bright, deep, yellow ochre kind of color. You know, I wish I had that in the series. Overall, this study was a very rewarding experience for me, and I hope it was for you too. And I hope this was helpful.